So yesterday we presented the data of the PRIMA study that was the ENGOT OB26 GOG3012 trial. <clears throat> what is the background of this uh, study? Uh, essentially two ideas. The first is that uh, we have a lot of patients with advanced ovarian cancer that uh, still have a high risk of early relapse at the end of therapy. And the second is that the maintenance therapy that we have available uh, don't, do not suit for all the patients. We have uh, Olaparib, but only for BRCA mutated patients. And we also have Bevacizumab, but the problem is that we could have some safety concerns for some patients and that for many patients that do receive new adjuvant chemotherapy, we do not have good evidence from randomized trial uh, on the role of Bevacizumab in those patients. So, in addition, we have the data of Nirapariv in the recurrent setting. Uh, the study Engotobi 16 NOVA trial demonstrated that giving Nirapariv after response to platinum-based chemotherapy in the recurrent setting significantly prolonged progression-free survival regardless of the biomarker status in patients that were BRCA mutated and BRCA wild type, patients that were HRD proficient and HRD deficient. So, what was the hypothesis of PRIMA study? Was to test if the addition of Nirapariv after frontline chemotherapy of patients with advanced ovarian cancer at high risk of relapse could improve the outcome of these patients. In order to answer this question, we perform a randomized three trial. We include patients that do have uh, high-grade serous or high-grade endometrial cancer and do have a stage 3 disease with residual disease, macroscopic residual disease after frontline, after primary debulking surgery. Also patients with a stage 3 that do receive new adjuvant chemotherapy regardless of the result of the interval debulking surgery and any stage 4 patients. Patients needed to have obtained a response to platinum. So all patients were platinum responders partial or complete response. And th these patients were randomized to Nirapariv or placebo in a two to one fashion way. So uh, the duration of treatment was 36 months or until disease progression. And we stratified patients according to three, fact three factors. New adjuvant chemotherapy, yes or not. Best response to chemotherapy, complete or response, uh, complete or partial. And the third was the status of the homologous recombination. For this study, we performed the analysis of homologous recombination status according to median my choice test, and we classified the patients in three groups, those that were deficient for homologous recombination, those that were proficient, and those that was not determined, mainly due to small amount of tumor that could not be possible to measure this middle my choice test. We include, as I said, a high risk population. Our primary endpoint was progression free survival uh, that was measured by a blended independent central review. And we tested the PFS, that was the primary endpoint, in a hierarchical uh, way. First, the homologous recombination deficient patients, and if that was positive, then we perform the test of PFS in the overall population. What are the results? So, we started with the homologous recombination deficient patients, and the addition of Nirapariv showed a clear reduction in the hazard of risk of progression uh, or death by 57% and a clear prolongation in the median progression free survival from 10.4 to 21.9 months. Then we move to the analysis of the overall population. And again, the addition of Nirapariv reduced the hazard of progression of, of or death by 38% and prolonged the progression free survival from 8.2 to 13.8 months. So those data have shown that Nirapariv significantly improved progression free survival, not only in the deficient patient, but also in the whole population. Then we have performed an analysis according to the 
homologous recombination status because this is an important issue for the patients. We, we, we need to classify our patients according to biomarkers. And we have seen that there is a benefit in BRCA mutated patients, but also in homologous recombination deficient BRCA wild type patients. And most importantly, there was a clear benefit in the homologous recombination proficient group with a hazard ratio of 0 0.68. So the benefit across biomarker was detected, but the amount of benefit was higher in the mutant group, has a ratio of 0.4. Second, in the HRD deficient, but BRCA wild type, has a ratio of 0.5. And finally, in the homologous recombination proficient, 0.68. Regarding safety, Nuraparif did, as we know that, the drug is um, uh, is doing in, in these patients uh, and the safety profile was completely um, consistent with data from the recurrent setting from the NOVA trial. Finally, what does this mean for our patients? So I think that we have now a new opportunity for a lot of patients that do not have other opportunities to prolong their progression-free survival. I'm thinking in those patients that do have uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy, that do have only partial response after chemotherapy, that do have even each class of biomarker situation. Um, Neuraparif after chemotherapy prolonged progression free survival in all the patients and need to be included as a new standard of care for our patients.